how cell phone hacking works. Cell phone hackers don't work a whole lot different than the Call of Duty Scrambler that you see playing video games. That's an actual device and you can purchase them online. A cell phone jammer typically is spread spectrum and therefore blocks all signals across all bands. But if you're actually going to attack an individual, you want one of the small ones that works on a single carrier band and is only going to block calls from that carrier. Otherwise, it's going to look awfully suspicious. Also, you only want to block the 3G portions of the signal. And that's because it's so much easier to hack 1X band signals. So, the way it would typically work is you deploy the scrambler that would block the 3G signals for the specific carrier that the person was using. And then you'd use a device that attaches to two large antennas, one that takes the internal signals or the nearby signals and does the 1X, and one that is strong enough to bypass the 3G so that it can talk to the carrier. Along the way, you're going to intercept and record any of the conversations that are going on and write them out over the Ethernet port to your local network or to a wireless network where you can intercept them and decode them later. This method is highly illegal. I'm not going to tell you how to do it or where to get the equipment, but know that it is in fact possible if you've ever been to one of the DEF CONs in Las Vegas. You've probably seen people deploy these. Um, if you haven't this is the scary stuff that will make you stay up late at night wondering whether or not people are listening to your phone calls. Because with two pretty easy to conceal devices that are pretty normal looking, especially since I have built this one into a device that was a box for a Cisco product. So if somebody found it in their network, they'd be more likely to call IT than the police. So. Uh, basically, using these kinds of techniques, you can eavesdrop on calls pretty easily, SMS messages, and even the apps that are running in the background, because when 1x data goes by, it is also unencrypted. And so all of the things that are going by checking for email via POP are just going to send your username and password in clear text over the POP. Um, that may not be the case if your POP account is enabled with SSH, but most people's are not. So it's a great way to get usernames, passwords, contacts, text messages, and any of that kind of data for the person that you're attempting to spy on or hack.